Welcome back to Reading Shira O'Connor. We are going to start with Chapter 11, which is entitled, Whose Mother? Which country do you like better, the United States or Japan? A naive college friend once asked Kano. Foolish question! Whose mother is better, yours or mine? Though Kano's loyalty to his native land and his deep love for it were typical of Japanese citizens, he was realistic. My country has been thinking in the direction of war for a long time, he said. The very thought of his fellow ministers and Christian laypersons having to fight and die in China never ceased to trouble him. I know that many of our men were killed by fighting, he said more than once. I think about the families they left behind. We must avoid fighting between nations, even though we may pay with sacrifices, and many of them. A typical entry in his diary read, I am thinking of my fellow countrymen and friends in Christ who are facing hardships at this time. May God bless them all. My country's great need is Christianity. She must have it, or I cannot imagine the outcome. I must work and study harder for the honor of my country. I cannot waste my study time while my people are living under such harsh circumstances. I must pray for my country that she may be led in God's way. As firm as his decision had been not to bow before the shrine of Shinto during the days of his military training, just as firm was his refusal to return to his country and then to fight China. He received a letter from his missionary with respect to his ordination and return to Japan. I want to be ordained, he said, but I don't want to return until the war between China and Japan is over. He would be ordained as an elder in the Church of the Nazarene by Dr. J.B. Chapman in Malden, Massachusetts, on April 28, 1940. Someday I must leave America and return to Japan, he said. My country and my people need me. I cannot disappoint them or God. I must pray for peace. His diary reveals that both his college and university classrooms provided havens of refuge and understanding as the tensions against his country began to mount. Yet he was practicing no illusions. I do not expect that my way shall be an easy one. I shall meet unbearable hardships as a Japanese alien. In late March of 1942, as Kano was returning from the university, he burst into Professor Spangenberg's classroom. He was radically changed. Back and forth, he paced across the room in a way quite unlike his usual manner. All the while, he mumbled a sort of soliloquy. How shall I do it? He blurted out. I could never stay in prison for four or five years, maybe more, through a long war. Prison? Yes, prison in America. I could never stay in there and endure the inactivity and mental torture. I must work, accomplish. I must too be free. He seemed an eagle about to be caged. Chapter 12, Valley of Decision On the morning of Good Friday, April 3rd, 1942, Kana was listening to a reading of Pilgrim's Progress in the college chapel. You must go through many tribulations to enter into the kingdom of heaven. You will be beset with enemies who will strain hard and they will kill you. But be faithful unto death and the king will give you a crown of life. In less than two hours, he called for his college pastor and his English teacher. His time had come. He was sitting quietly with two agents from the FBI. His face was unresponsive, dead. A couple of theology books open on his table, his tennis racket on the shelf, his paint-spattered overalls on his closet door, all testament to the life that had been, but was to be no more. Kano threw a few articles into his suitcase, put on his coat, for the last time looked at his old familiar room, his home in America for the past four and a half years, and made his way down the stairs. On Good Friday, at noon, past the chapel, library, classrooms, the red Japanese maple and ginkgo trees, there filed past a strange company. The diminutive Shiro, two FBI agents, the college pastor, Dr. Samuel Young, and Kano's tutor, Professor Spangenberg. Tears were in Kano's eyes, the pastor said, as Kano was driven off in the red automobile. After all, he is one of us. He is an ordained minister in our church. 
Kano's arrest as an enemy alien was inevitable. His being accosted on the Boston train might have been only the beginning of a series of incidents. Furthermore, the safety of his college and friends had to be considered. At least the waiting was over. Or had it only begun? Tomorrow is Easter and I shall miss it, he wrote from the immigration station in East Boston. It will be my first experience of missing a service on the morning of Resurrection Day, every Easter since I became a Christian 15 years ago. I shall miss it. During the turbulent days of 1942, the East Boston Immigration Station seemed surprisingly inadequate to house the intense human dramas that began unfolding. After the inevitable questionings and presenting of credentials to obtain a pass, after being handled by guards whose rattling keys clicked open several gates at last, the narrow hole in the wall used as a reception room for prisoners was reached. A venerable fatherly guard appeared at the outset to be the essence of human kindness. My books were Shiro's first words to his visitors after greetings were exchanged. Please get my four boxes of books and take them to your home. Then they will be safe. Yes, the food was all right, and he was well treated. Boston University will soon let me know about finishing my work in here, but I am optimistic. He requested several textbooks. There had been so many forces and circumstances trying to divert him from his primary pursuit. What was one more obstacle? Many visited him his college and university professors, classmates, his neighbors on the edge of campus, some fellow ministers, and two students to whom he was teaching Japanese. The president of his college graduating class wrote him from the officer's candidate school in Virginia. I very much admire and respect you for the stand you have taken. It was the only honest and honorable course, and you could take no other. It's going to be up to men like you to straighten out the mess when this is over. Dr. C. Warren Jones, then Secretary of the Board of Foreign Missions of the Church of the Nazarene, now Global Missions, wrote Kano that the church would assume his expenses for his Ph.D. degree. They are depending on me to be one of the future leaders in our church in Japan. They do not know I am now in a cage. Dr. Dr. J.B. Chapman, General Superintendent of the Church of the Nazarene, offered him his summer home in Michigan. He is so kind, Kano exclaimed, but I am in this cage and can't go. Yet his joy was unbounded when he received the consent of Boston University to finish his thesis and other studies for his Master of Arts degree, even though he was in a cage. More than studies concerned him. The problem of repatriation tormented him like the plague. Kano could have been released had he accepted the chance to go to Washington to translate for the U.S. government. If I should accept and the news should reach my people, they would never listen to me preach the gospel, he declared. He seemed a man without a country, arrested in an adopted land, most of whose political and religious philosophy he could accept, while a native of a country whose creed and conduct he could not support. His every action must be such that his countrymen would be willing to hear the story of redemption from his own lips. It has been nearly three weeks since I have come here, he wrote on the morning of his hearing, April 22, 1942. This morning I shall have another new, strange experience. I have never stood before a judge, and I will taste the mental bitterness of being handcuffed. I wish to be conscientious in my witness before the Lord, not just before the authority or the state. I have come to the U.S. for better preparation for the ministry. If the present process, which now I am going through, is part of it, I will take it gratefully. Kano's college president attended his hearing and reported, Shiro conducted himself in a most admirable fashion. When asked if he was willing to renounce his country and offer his allegiance to the United States, he said that he was not, because such action would disqualify him for taking the gospel to his own people. Therefore, he would not renounce his allegiance to Japan. 
When asked if he would obey the emperor regardless of what he would require of him, Shiro said candidly that he would not do anything against the United States because of his American friends and because of the gratitude that he had in his heart for the treatment he had received at their hands. The college president continued, One of the men of the board asked me if I would be willing to have him paroled to me in the event that they should decide to release him. I told him that I believed in Kano's integrity and I should be glad to have him paroled to me personally. This kindness seemed to move Shiro very deeply. After his hearing was over, he thanked me in his characteristic way, which made me feel that he was very grateful indeed. The college president continued, He was to be convicted to the extent that he was to be interned if he remained in the United States. I do not believe that the authorities actually felt that he was a malicious character, but I think they felt that, with the war on, it would be dangerous both to him and to the peace of the people among whom he lived to let him go free. The kindly old guard told Kano's tutor and mentor, He is a good Christian young man and should receive all the help he can to get the right advice about repatriation. Once the guard told the visitor, I investigated his case and find that the only thing the United States government has against him is his military training in Japan. If only he makes the right decision. For the first few weeks of April, he was deep in the valley of decision. Imprisonment in, in America? And for how many years? Or freedom in his own land, back with his own people whom he must serve? To the vice president of his college, who was visiting him, he expressed his feeling for his native land. My country is wrong. My country is sick, but she is still my country.